Beef Research School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by the Beef Cattle Research Council. Well, I guess the first thing we should say is what RFI is. <laughs> so this is what we call residual feed intake, and it's really the new way in which most people around the world will be measuring feed efficiency. Um, in the past, we have used a measure of feed efficiency called feed to gain ratio. And when it comes down to genetic selection uh, for feed efficiency, if we found that feed to gain ratio doesn't really work that well. In other words, if we select for improved feed to gain ratio, it doesn't result in animals that are improved in terms of feed efficiency. And it primarily has to do with the fact that feed to gain ratio is related to body size and average daily gain in body composition. So the result is we get animals that grow faster but eat more. So we really don't get anywhere. So what we've done is we've come up with another measure which is called residual feed intake or it's also called net feed efficiency that essentially adjusts feed intake for body size and production. And so what that does is then it leaves the trait pure of all those conflicting factors that, that sort of mess up a selection program for feed efficiency. So it works very well in terms of looking for animals that have lower maintenance requirements. And of course what, why that's important is that cattle, most of them, well cattle, um, spend about two-thirds of their consumed energy every day just in maintenance. So just to maintain themselves and uh, that has nothing to do with production. So if we could reduce their requirements, their feed energy requirement for, for maintenance, what it would do is it mean that there'd be a little bit more energy left over for productive reasons like growth in a growing animal and milk production in a dairy cow as an example. So that's really some of the things that we've done around uh, residual feed intake. So really what we're doing is we're looking for a low residual feed intake. What it means is animals have the same level of productivity and body size, but they consume less feed. So that's what we're looking for. When we do that, when we start selecting animals for lower residual feed intake, what happens is, is that uh, in terms of feedlot cattle, as an example, we'll get feeder cattle that produce the same ha at the same body weight have the same carcass traits at the very end, so the same uh, carcass weight and back fat thickness and all those good things we want in our carcass, but consume less feed getting there, right? So it's, it's, a, it's, it's a pretty good trait. So last year we fed 60 beef bulls, uh, looking at their efficiency. We had two different diets. We split uh, forage based and grain based between the 60 bulls, 15 per pen. So we had a four by four setup. Uh, the, we w got enough data for the first efficiency period where we measured their RFI value. And then for half the bulls, we switched from a forage to grain based diet and looked at another 76 or so days to get that efficiency. And from there, our main goal was to see if any re-ranking occurred between pens and the ultimate goal of that was to see if efficiency changes per diet that they're fed. And the diets were very comparable with the same energy density just so we can get a, an accurate uh, and comparable measure. So we've got one year under our belt and uh, I guess first of all, our, our initial findings were that the diet did play a role. The two pens that we switched their uh, efficiency rankings also change within pen. So that shows us that uh, diet does play a major role in the feed efficiency and that determining feed efficiency on a grain-based diet, which most bull test stations do, may not translate into efficiency out on pasture when they're eating forages, per se. Uh, the, the ranges for the lowest to the highest were anywhere from, uh, I think our lowest bull was minus, minus two and a half pounds against the average for RFI which is zero and the highest bull was around 3.2 pounds and that's dry matter so 
for our 50% uh, moisture diet, that translates to about a seven plus seven pounds to about plus five or minus five pounds difference. So, uh, when we if we select for efficient cattle, bulls and heifers and all those kinds of things. Yes, we'll produce efficient progeny, but the major benefit from of selecting for low residual feed intake will be more efficient cows. In other words, these cows will be in your herd consuming less feed and also producing less methane and greenhouse gases as well.